Some rules and regulations are there to protect the riders in races. Some are there to ensure the safety of their spectators. But there are many, many rules that just don't really have a reason at all. Don't really know why they are there. I mean, in stage five of the Tour de France, Julien Alaphilippe was given a 20 second time penalty, thus losing the yellow jersey because his lead over British rider Adam Yates was just a slender four seconds. But why? Well, Julien Alain Philippe took a feed 17.5 kilometers from the finish. Doesn't sound serious, does it? Well, actually, feeding within the last 20 kilometers is forbidden. Yep, it's a rule that's there and we don't really know why. But for more race analysis, you should definitely check out the breakaway over on the GCN app. But we thought for this video, well, we would trawl through the rule book, find out the rules and regulations. So hopefully we can get some more strange ones to inform Alaphilippe so he doesn't make the same mistake. In 2015, in the Giro d'Italia, you may remember Richie Porte puncturing close to the finish. With no teammates around, he turned to Simon Clark. With a fantastic show of sportsmanship, Simon gave up his own wheel to allow Porte to race, helping his friend and fellow countrymen. Now, yes, I hear you. Doff your cap and say chapeau. I mean, even social media, it was lauded and praised. But meanwhile, behind the scenes, the race jury really did drop the rule book on poor Richie Port, giving him a two minute time penalty, thus ruling him out of contention in that race. He later on abandoned the race. But it does make you think, with a sport that relies so heavily on teamwork and camaraderie, you would think, well, we would just let it go. I mean, even if it was offered from a rider on a rival team. One of the most well-known rules in the world of cycling. 23 years ago, this rule was put in place to prevent riders from making their bikes too light and unsafe. But that was 23 years ago. I mean, technology has changed. Yes, bikes are infinitely stronger and safer than they used to be. But some riders have fallen foul of this very rule. Yeah, poor Frenchman Peter Pooley was stripped of his victory at the Tour de Bangi Wangi back in 2016. Peter took a spare bike that had a slight different specification on it, thus riding a bike that was too light. The race jury took it upon themselves to invoke rule number 12113. Unlucky for some. Ah yes, the infamous UCI sock rule, rule number 13033. It states, <clears throat> Socks and overshoes used in competition may not rise above the height defined by the half distance between the middle of the lateral malleolus and the middle of the fibular head. Yeah, basically, you can't have your socks over halfway up your calf thus giving a pro an aerodynamic advantage by having more aerodynamically optimized material covering their body. On top of the absurdity of this rule, it seems like quite a hard rule to enforce. I mean, commissars rocking around the race pits, checking the sock length with calipers to make sure they fit in with the regulations. I mean, we think back to the World Championships last year, where Remco of Venepoel turned up with socks that were just too long. He was asked to roll them down only to start the race, rolled down the ramp and pulled them straight back up. I mean, it does seem a little bit ludicrous, doesn't it? Or is it just me? Now it might surprise you, but you are actually allowed to walk in a race, bearing in mind you've got your bicycle. I mean, it doesn't happen that often, but you might remember Chris Froome running up Mont Ventoux. He got hit off his bike by a race motorbike and then had his bike run over. I mean, the race jury were actually sympathetic this time in letting Chris off, but it's something that should not be risked. I mean, Chris could have been landed with a very, very hefty time penalty. Now, this one could be a controversial one to add to our list of cycling's stupidest rule. 
Not least because, well, it's not actually a rule that is enforced by the officials or the cycling UCI. This is a long-standing rule, but it's unwritten and it is in pro cycling. And it is if there is a big crash in the peloton that riders wouldn't launch an attack and benefit from their rival's misfortune. But it is that, it's unwritten. So it's open to interpretation. So if you've got some pros who are maybe not well versed in cycling etiquette, that they could take advantage. On stage 19 of the 2019 Vuelta España, there was a massive pileup in the peloton, just 65 kilometers from the finish, involving race leader Primus Roglic and also high up in the overall standings, Miguel Angel Lopez, who is sitting fourth. Now, before they had even time to get on their bikes, Movistar's Alejandro Valverde and also Nairo Quintana, who is sitting second and third overall, hit the front, driving the pace to try and, I guess, take advantage over Primoz Roglic while he was sat on the floor to try and get the race leader's jersey, benefiting off that accident. Let's just say Movistar didn't make many friends that day. And just a day later, he was served some karma with Tade Pocaccia winning stage 20 and uh, knocking poor Naira Quintana off that final podium. Road cyclists can get the fun taken out of them for some of the silly things they may wear. But did you know there was a rule that says what you can and can't wear to sign on? I mean, the UCI, to say the least, are pretty strict. Uh, teams are given time slots where they should arrive at the pre-race sign-on. They leave their bus, arrive at sign-on, do their scrawl, is to create a bit of a spectacle for the eagerly awaiting crowd that have been waiting patiently to see the stars. And if you don't and you fail failure to do so, you can be landed with a 500 Swiss franc fine. And on top of that, a 20 UCI point deduction. Yeah, pretty hefty. And did you know you could get a fine on what you wear when you come to sign on? Think back to the UAE tour back in 2019 where Bahrain McLaren turned up in a well, team issue shirt and shorts. They then got handed a fine because it was non-competition wear, meaning they have to turn up in their Lycra hours and hours before the race even starts, meaning more chamois time. But I guess they did win out in the end because Shami time's training time. Ah, oh, I don't think they think it like that, but anyway. Every year we're reminded of some of the silly rules that seem to take the freedom and fun out of our sport. But they never seem to change, do they? If we've missed some absolute bangers, some corkers, then, well, you know what to do. Let us know in that comment section below. And if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.